Welcome members to another episode of From the Archives. My name is Leslie Jones and I'm the Collections and Archives Manager at the History Center. In these episodes, I will be taking you into the archives and sharing items with you that have a fascinating history behind them. Today, we will be looking at an artifact chosen by our amazing summer intern, Dash Acker. This artifact is a surgical suction unit made by the AS Aloe Company. Let's talk about the history of the Aloe Company, a little bit about the piece, and then a special look at the history of the donor, Mrs. Linda Wally Carter. The Albert Sidney Aloe Company was founded in 1860 in St. Louis, Missouri. At that time, the company specialized in optical equipment, including glasses, opera glasses, telescopes, and microscopes. After a brief partnership with William Herdstein from 1880 to 1885, A.S. Allo went back into business for himself and began selling various medical equipment. What is most fascinating about the A.S. Allo company is Albert's son, Louis Allo. After taking over the company in 1893, Louis served as president of the St. Louis Board of Aldermen and became an interim mayor of St. Louis in 1917. During his temporary position as mayor, there was the infamous race riot in East St. Louis that caused roughly 100 deaths and burned more than 300 homes. During the riot, thousands of black people fled to St. Louis, where Allo opened a lodging house, a shelter that provided refuge for any men, women, and children fleeing the riots. Today, there is Allo Plaza, dedicated to Louis Allo and his assistance during what is considered one of the worst race riots in American history. The company merged with Brunswick Corporation in 1950 and is still in business today. This artifact is part of a surgical suction unit. They were usually kept inside a cabinet with tubes connected to it. The aspirator was used to remove obstructions from a person's airway, including blood, saliva, and mucus. This machine not only helped patients remove these substances, so they could breathe. It also cleared the airway for when a person needed to be intubated at the hospital. This specific machine, based on the labels, parts, and color, was made in the mid-1950s. After looking through many documents about our artifacts, I found the item was donated by Mrs. Linda Watley Carter. Her father, Perry Watley Sr., owned Watley's Pharmacy on the Gainesville Square. It was located at 111 Spring Street, that is now the public defender's office across from the Hall County Courthouse. The pharmacy not only filled prescriptions, but it also had the best soda fountain in town. I had a great conversation with Mrs. Carter about her life and her father's pharmacy. Linda Watley, now Linda Carter, grew up in Gainesville with one brother, Perry Jr., and one sister, Lavinia. Linda and her family have lived here all their life. Linda went to Gainesville High School, and she won the senior superlative for Most Thoughtful in 1959. Linda recalled that students were allowed to leave campus for lunch, and because the pharmacy was so close to the school, many kids went to Wally's for lunch. The favorite above all at the store was the Spoon Burgers. Lynn Tankersley, daughter of Zeke Fowler, said the original recipe for those burgers was her mother's, but when he introduced them to Wally's, they became a huge hit that Gainesville residents still remember. Linda recalled that Zeke made the best ice cream in town. John Roberts remembered Watley's fondly. His mother and grandmother would take him to Watley's to get lemon Cokes. Sandra Collins Little, who worked as a bookkeeper at Watley's Pharmacy while attending Murnau University, said the lemon custard was wonderful. And when her mother came to pick her up after her shift, Dr. Watley would give their family a carton to take home. Sandra said Dr. Watley was a fine man. Mary Waters Watt said, I remember Perry Watley opening one Sunday for my daddy to fill a prescription I needed. He is a good man. Michael Stringer said, I remember my dad going there to get prescriptions filled, and I was amazed at the soda fountain and how much it looked like something from a TV show. Linda Watley Carter went on to marry another local, Alan Carter, a Georgia Tech graduate who worked at Chicopee Mill. And to my shock and pure excitement, Mrs. Carter told me that she was one of the founders of the Northeast Georgia History Center in 2004. James Mathis Sr., one of the creators of the museum, said to Linda that he had an idea and he wanted her help to make it happen. 
So many great artifacts are here because of Mrs. Carter, and while she is humble about her work here at the History Center, we are more than grateful for her and what she's done for the community. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of From the Archives. It is because of members like you that we get the opportunity to delve into the research on these amazing objects. I'd like to thank our intern, Dash Acker, for her extensive research on the artifact, and to Alan Hawk, the collections manager at the National Museum of Health and Medicine. Please comment if you have any questions about the Aloe Company, Watley's Pharmacy, or about what artifacts we have here at the History Center.